live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Everyone, welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, February 22nd. 2022. Hi, Courtney. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. February uh, 22nd, so it's 2 2 2 2022. And you're watching Channel 2. Oh, that is perfect. That's perfect. So listen, if you haven't been on click to Houston.com for a while, check it out because right now we have 22 facts about our KPRC2 on air team, our family here. Uh, spoiler alert, Courtney, should we give it away? Go ahead. I think many of our viewers know and love you. They know you wanted to be a showgirl yes. for your career. Somehow things went terribly wrong, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late. Listen, one day, one day I hope to climb that mountain. She's still training for it. <laughs> We're going to have some fun on today's show. Today on Houston Life, smart snacking for American Heart Month. What we can all add to our daily routines to improve heart health, including expert tips and fun recipes that are both healthy and delicious. And say goodbye to your dog. Dog's bad breath. It's a thing. We have simple ways that you can improve your pup's dental health. And by the way, doggy bad breath, not normal. Also, how the whole family can enjoy plenty of fun at Moody Gardens for spring break. Lauren Kelly's got the attractions and deals you don't want to miss. Plus, Joe Sam has a look at a new series centered around black history, and he's joining us now. Hi, Joe. Hey, Courtney. Yeah, this series is called Inside the Black Box. I'll tell you how it's spotlighting some of the world's greatest actors of color and their journey to success. Back to you guys. Okay, before we get into all of that, let's get a check of your forecast. It was a little stormy. We were upstairs and we heard the rain coming, so we're ready for that cold front, Frank. Uh, you know what? It's going to waffle. It's just uh. going to, I know, just like your desire to be a showgirl. It's just... <laughs> It's not going to be able to make up its mind. Did you know it's National Margarita Day today? Of course. Of course you did. Duh. <laughs> Maybe it should be uh, National Margarita Day. I don't know. Yeah, there are your showers. You can see a little bit of that continues to go on. We're not going to see a lot of rain, but just enough to make things interesting. But we're going to keep that chance in there as we go into the next several days because there's that front. Look at those temperatures. Dallas is at 44. Amarillo's at 31. Austin, 79. 85 in San Antonio. And we're at 70. So as we continue, we're going to continue to see it looks like a fairly uh, foggy one down in Galveston and some chance for showers as we head right on in today. So we'll continue to watch that and talk more about it coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Frank, thank you so much. We'll see you in a bit. Very okay. nice. As we were saying, here's our question for today. Frozen or on the rocks is what we're going to be saying today. I know, why choose, right? In honor of National Margarita Day. The cocktail, of course, Ooh. is the adult beverage known as the most common tequila-based drink served in the U.S. It's really good. It's yummers, right? We've got a bunch of flavors here. And thanks to our friends over at Taco Cabana who sent us over a few different options. They include lime, strawberry, mango, which is my favorite, and the mango nada margarita as well. Mm. You have the strawberry, right? It's, I, I don't know. I think I might have had the mango. Mix it up. Either way, it's delicious. Cheers. So good. Cheers. I think I have the mango. Cheers to you. Mm -hmm. So it, in addition to National Margarita Day, tell the viewers. I know. This is also Taco Tuesday. So mm -hmm. while you're picking up your margs, grab a bite to eat as well. Over the next few weeks, Houston Life and Taco Cabana will be teaming up to provide lunch to some hardworking members of our community. And earlier, Lauren Kelly visited Gigi's Playhouse, an organization that promotes acceptance and hopes to change the lives of folks with Down syndrome by providing free programs to empower families. And here's a clip from her visit. <laughs> it, it gives up my baby. Oh, you, oh, you like Taco oh, Cabana? Do yes, I do. Me too. Right? Me too. <laughs> I love Taco Cabana. <laughs> Talk about exciting, oh, right? So nice. In the coming weeks, we'll be showcasing what Gigi's Playhouse does for our community. And if you would like to nominate a hardworking group to receive lunch for our next Taco Tuesday with Taco Cabana, you can visit HoustonLife.tv and fill out the submission form. I love the reaction. I like Taco Cabana. Well, guess what? These are for you. Yeah. Fantastic. Still to come, how would you rank your cooking skills? Even with an executive chef, would you think? I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> A new survey is stirring up the conversation in the kitchen. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back.
Welcome back to Houston Life on this Taco Tuesday, National Margarita Day, whatever you want to call it. Two, 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 two. All the twos. We're glad to have you with us here on KPRC2. So, landmark agreement. You probably heard about this, Courtney. The U.S. soccer team reached an agreement finally uh, with the U.S. Soccer Federation. Want to make sure I get that correct? USSF. And if you'll recall, they've been in this six year legal battle, essentially over the the topic of equal pay getting the same amount of money that the men are getting and back when they won the title in 2019 in france courtney you might remember the crowd yeah. started chanting equal pay equal pay there's megan rapinoe right there uh, with the purple hair she's really been uh one of the the teammates at the forefront of this conversation but what this landmark deal uh essentially said is that 24 million dollars plus bonuses that match the men's team will be given a lot of people are saying it is about time for this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, equal pay. 100%. I loved reading this article too. It was fantastic. Well, and it, with all the progress we've made yeah. as well, though, when you look at uh, women in jobs doing the, the same thing that men are doing across the board, women are still making less than men. Yes, and it continues to make the headlines. And it's sure. a conversation that needs to continue making the headlines. Absolutely. You know, we have talked a lot about this here, sometimes on a Monday, where we say we need a day in between Sunday and Monday, right? You just want an extra long weekend. Well, this is crazy. Um, Belgium is just an, another country that has extended the um, approved the four day week work week. Wow. So, so it's like national law there. Yes, they just reached a deal that allows Belgian employees to work a four day work week also gives them the right to ignore work related messages after hours without facing repercussions. I, I, we're hearing some applause <laughs> here in the studio. <laughs> it's so this is employees can now request to work 10 hours a day if their trade unions allow this instead of that maximum eight in return they work work one less day per week and receive the same pay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so they're just kind of figuring out, like maybe, you know, they're able to just slam it all in in that one day or that extra day work a longer day and you get a little bit more on the you back You want end. to charter a plane to Belgium? Luke, Let's there do right it. Now. No, I think also the, the idea of email too, this is really interesting to me because even when you physically leave the office, let's say one of your coworkers sends you a message at an email at 9.30 p.m. and then the next morning at seven, they're like, uh, hello, you didn't get my message. Well, typically you're not working during those hours. Right. So are you in the wrong for not reading that email? I mean, it depends on where you work, I guess. I guess so. Not in Belgium, huh. that's restricted hours. I've always wanted to go to Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> now I have another reason. Okay, so last night we stayed up a little late. The uh, Tinder Swindler. Okay, have not Netflix. seen it. Okay, so guys, if you have not seen this, I feel more than 50 million people have seen this on Netflix yeah, no, so it's, far. Yeah, no, it's a big time. Obsessed with it. Two of our producers, Aaron, Kat, Lauren, Kelly has seen it. Anyone and everyone should watch this documentary. So essentially this guy swindles women. I'll leave it at that. Watch it. But there's also a New York Times article talking about the rampant increase in dating acts, app scams. The woman you're seeing on the screen right okay. now, she is just one of tens of thousands of people who annually are scammed. You know, they fall in love. It's You, you described it earlier as like the oldest trick in the book, Courtney. It you, is the oldest trick in the book. And I feel like too, it, you know, people when they're in a vulnerable state will do extreme things, right? So. Mm -hmm whether that's giving money, whether it's $10, whatever. And sometimes if this circumstance seems too good to be true. Yeah, sometimes it's $10 or- Or 10,000. Or 300,000 in the case of the woman you just saw on the screen. Essentially, she met this guy and they fell in love. And after a month, he was saying, hey, I've been uh, thinking about our future together. I really want you to be the mother of my children. Saying you all know, the right things. We could have a really great wedding if you would just use my advice and in invest in cryptocurrency. And what did she do? She, she did handed it. over $300,000 and she lost it all. Oh, it's more so common than you think though. I mean, these are educated yes. people and yes. they're giving up their money in the name of love. It's it's heartbreaking. It is, it's an age old story. But listen, okay, I, we were talking about this earlier, uh, right before the break. You know, with all these shows, Top Chef, of course, we're getting ready for season 19 here yes. in Houston. So great. A lot of times there's these great, uh, beautifully trained chefs, but then there's also you know, the home cook. And you see all these shows, right, competing against all these different chefs. Yeah. Well, listen to this. Two-thirds of home cooks think they can cook 
with the pros. Oh, I bet that's probably true. I think huh? so too. This has done a, a survey of 2,000 adults conducted by one poll, and they found that 63% of Americans think their skills can truly compete with professional celebrity chefs. Oh. I, I do. I think that this is a thing. Two in three believe that they could open their own restaurant or catering business. Hey, that's impressive because the pressure of these cooking shows, I mean, when the, when the cameras go on, I think I would freeze. Kind of like I do here in Houston Life. Oh, you're getting so much better, though. <laughs> <laughs> but think about the kids. We've had lots of younger chefs who have gone. They are not classically trained. Yeah. They just learned. They knew the passion. Half the passion, I think, in any job, right, or half of it, the battle, is the passion. Yeah. So if you're cooking without love, you know, some of those chefs, they cook, sprinkle, Mrs. Trailer, she makes some good stuff, and it's just, it's, it's sprinkled with love. That's what... She is so good. And you know, Brandon learned to cook from his grandparents. And so one of the reasons why I love hanging out with him while he's cooking in the kitchen is because he'll tell me these stories it about his life. Better. And it's that much better. So I think if you grow up with cooking in your blood, then it's in your DNA. Or can you just eat it? That, that counts too, right? Even yeah. if you're not cooking it? Just well, that's the recipient. That's my role. Okay, good. Perfect. I'm the eater in the family. <laughs> Let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, my grandmother would always say you cook with a little bit of butter and a whole lot of love. Yes. That's the, say, that's the saying we all we, we need to go by. Now, of course, you guys, we want to hear from you. What's something you're surprisingly good at? We already have some great answers coming in. Let's take a look at the big board. Carla, she writes in, reading the room. I've got spidey senses. Ooh. That's good, Carla. Okay, Krista, she writes in, nature photography. We're going to have to see some of those pictures go ahead and send those in Robin she writes in the gift of gab everywhere I go I meet somebody new yes Robin and then Jean she writes in in the words of Billy Currington I'm pretty good at drinking beer yes gold medal Jean <laughs> gold medal love it Go ahead. Now, I love that. Now, of course, you guys, we want you to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page. Join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. I know both of you have something surprising that we don't know about. Well, I think we do know about it. I'm really good at ghosting. Oh, ghosting people. Derek. <laughs> I can attest. She is an expert at ghosting. I, I've actually been ghosted by you. Uh, you know, I'm actually a remarkably good rollerblader, Joe. Ooh, we're going to have to go and rollerblade sometimes. Now, I do a lot of good slam poetry. A lot of people Ooh. don't know that about me, but I can spit a verse or two. Okay. Hey, yeah. I want to see that in action. I, come on I down. It. I'm going to go to a poetry club. You guys are welcome to come. I'll have you in the audience. I love it. Perfect. Perfect. I need a lot of these, though. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll we can arrange that. that. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. When we come back, is it time to upgrade the look of your home? How a team of flooring experts can bring the shopping experience straight to you. They're going to bring hundreds of samples to choose from. And later, head on down to the island for spring break. Find out what the whole family can experience at Moody Gardens. That and so much more when Houston Life returns. Welcome back. If you've been thinking of giving your home a brand new look, new flooring can dramatically transform your space. And a company called 50 Floor promises to make that process seamless. Here with more, including the benefits of investing in new floors, Maria Sotolongo. Welcome back. Great to see you. Thank you. Likewise. I love when you bring all the samples. And let's <laughs> talk about why we should think about adding some new floorings, really updating, because it's more or right. less in reinvesting into your home. It really is. And let's face it, Courtney, number one investment in our home drum roll it's the floors. Absolutely. It really is, and it will bring you back such great value. So a lot of people think, oh, no, I'll redo the bathrooms. I'll redo the kitchen. But your floor will always give back to you, especially the higher-end floors. But even the vinyls and laminates have come such a long way. So really, the number one investment is your floor. So go ahead and call the experts. 50 Floor is here to help you all the way. We're going to walk through some of the options in just a little bit, but you're also saying uh, one of the things that you need to look at is the warranty when you're looking at flooring too. Exactly. You know, most of the time we are going to give you a warranty of 25 to 30 years, and that is a phenomenal, again, investment because you know you're not going to have to be replacing them every year, every other year, like other things. Now, if you do have carpet, remember that every eight years you should be thinking about getting new carpet because those allergens will yeah. no longer uh, be able to be removed just by vacuuming. But any other flooring is going to be a huge investment, maybe, or a really good investment 
it all the time. So enjoy it now. That's also what we say, Courtney. Don't wait until you're going to move out and sell the house and then you don't get time to enjoy it. Get 50 floor out there. We do home improvement. It's done right and it is all the way from the beginning to the end. We're going to be with you so you don't have to do this by yourself. 50 floor will help you. I love it and there's so many options. Let's talk about what really sets 50 floor apart from the rest of these businesses out there. Exactly. We're going to come to you. You don't have to go to the big box store and pick out a few samples. We will bring you hundreds of samples right there to the comfort of your own home so that then you can really make that informed decision and see it with your colors, with your patterns, with your uh, paint colors, right? And it makes such a big difference to have somebody that really knows the products talking to you about it right there in the comfort of your own home. And also the lighting in your own home. That makes a huge difference when you're in the store and you bring one of these little tiny samples yes. home. You don't really get a good idea of what it's going to look like. Right. So not only just having more than one, but again, having that wide op, you know, array of options right there in the comfort of your own home makes a big difference. And that is what sets 50 floor apart from everybody else. So many great things. Also, when we think about flooring, it sounds like a really good idea until we talk about the installation because that could be yes. a major headache. I know most people are like, oh no, my house is going to be a mess, but we will do all the heavy lifting. We will make sure that everything is left uh, cleaner perhaps than it even was before. We'll haul away that old flooring, whatever it is. Sometimes we can even donate it if it's in pretty decent condition, or of course we will take it away, but then we'll go ahead and put that new flooring down. Usually we can get this done in one day, and that for sure is what blows people away. They go, what? In just one day? And definitely is something that you need to think about because it doesn't get easier than that. No, it certainly doesn't, and that takes the headache out of it as well. What I also love too, and you talked about this already, all the samples come right to your home, so it makes it very yes. easy to walk through, even if you don't know what the decision is of the new floor. Right, whether you are sure that it is engineered wood, like what we have right here, or maybe the classic hardwood or carpet, or if you don't know what you want, we're going to bring you all, all of those samples to your home. And the options are endless. <laughs> Maria, it's great to see Thank you. you. Thanks so much for walking us through it. 50 Floor has a special offer for Houston Light viewers. Call within the next hour and save 60% off all materials. You can also use the promo code Houston Life to get an extra $100 off your order. The number to call is 877-50-FLOOR. That's 877-503-5667 or visit 50floor.com. Now let's send it over to Derek who's standing by with something fun for the whole family. And we are talking about spring break, Courtney, with 242 acres of lush tropical gardens, plenty of fun attractions, plus dining and hotel packages. Spring break is the perfect time to head down to Moody Gardens on Galveston Island. And that's where we find and our one and only Lauren Kelly this afternoon, who's got all the info on spring break 2022. Hey, Lauren. That's right, Derek. This is one of our favorite places to come down to. I cannot believe spring break is just around the corner. And here to talk about all of the fun that you can have right here in one spot is Marissa Guest. Now, we've been having a lot of fun conversations about some of the birds that were here. It doesn't matter about the weather. When you're at Moody Gardens, there's literally something for everybody, right? Yes, so we have plenty of indoor and outdoor attractions for everyone to enjoy, um, including our aquarium pyramid, rainforest pyramid, our 3D and 4D theaters, Discovery Museum, and our audience recognition theater. I mean, and the list just keeps going on and on, and some people might not even realize you can bring the family down here. Obviously, the hotel packages, and you can get dining. You can dine yourself. So it's not just something that the kids are going to enjoy. It's truly something for all ages. Yes, and we also have our, our golf course. Um, so that's a good place for dads to spend their days. Um, it's one of the top rated courses in Texas. Um, and so there's tons of options. I was going to bring my fiance to the golf course, but I thought, no, 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 no. He's never going to want to leave the golf course. So of course, that's definitely one of those things where it's like, all right, spend part of your day there and relax. And, and, you know, normally when the weather is nice, you guys have a big splash pad. There's just really a ton of things to do. Yeah, and we offer our one-day value pass, and that um, allows you to come out and see most of the attractions that we have here. So that's a good way to save money and enjoy the attractions. Absolutely. Now, you guys have some fun camps going on. There's plenty of new attractions.
attractions. We're going to talk about the 4D theater coming up in just a little while. But the pyramid, the rainforest pyramid is where it's at because we've just been kind of watching all. I swear there were so many birds behind us, you guys, but they're a little bit camera shy. So when, of course, we stood next to them, they all flew away. But once you come here, you get the full on experience in person. That's what it's all about, experiencing life right here at Moody Gardens. Moodygardens.org for more info. But don't go anywhere because Marissa's going to take us to another beautiful part of the pyramid coming up a little bit later on in the show. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys in Studio B. We love Moody Gardens so much, and the yeah. best part is it's right in our own backyard. You don't have to get on a plane to get down there, Lauren. We'll see you in a bit. You got it. Well, Joe is standing by with a brand new series with an important message. Hi, Joe. Yeah, you guys, coming up, I'm helping answer the question of what role race plays in the entertainment industry with a new series called Inside the Black Box. And of course, we'll get a check of what's coming up for the news at four, including what you need to know ahead of Rodeo Houston. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Tuesday. Lots to remember. It's Taco Tuesday. Yeah. It's 2222 two, 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 two on Channel 2. It's National Margarita Day. I mean, there's all kinds of things to celebrate. Uh, today. There, totally, totally. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Houston Life. Time to get more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier, we asked, what is something you are surprisingly good at? Kathy writes in, sitting on the couch with a glass of wine, watching Houston Life. Oh. Our kind of girl. I Thanks, love Kathy. That's so sweet. Cindy writes in, I can usually cure hiccups <gasps> in person or often over the phone. <laughs> what? Are you hypnotizing people? What's uh, going on? Cindy, we're going to be saving your number on speed dial. We I need really more could have used you, uh, your help the last time Courtney and I went out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kimberly writes in, falling upstairs. Been really good at it my whole mm. life. It's a good party trip, Kimberly. So it that is a good party trip. We've all fallen up the stairs, it right? Happens. I mean, I, our last house, I fell down the stairs a couple times in the morning when I was groggy going down to get coffee. Hiccups? The hiccups thing, no. I don't know why I get them sometimes. They're so cute. Apparently, I know why. <laughs> apparently, I had them for an hour the last time we hung out. Yes, but you don't remember, and that's I okay. Don't. They yeah. were really cute. It happened. It happened. I love it. Okay, well, let's check in now with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at Four Guys Hidden Talents. I'm a good bridge player. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's, that's a good talent to have. It is. Yeah, we need more bridge players. We People aren't know. playing as much. It's yeah. Anyway. Well, like for it. me, <laughs> folks, guys, I'm here to tell you, I can make some cabbage that is out of this world. Bring it. Man, yes. Man, like, it's so good that I think I could start a cabbage. If there was a market, oh, I could yeah? do a cabbage-based restaurant. Oh, yeah. Keith's cabbage. It's oh, there see, we go. it's I'm I surprised myself. I couldn't believe it was it's as good as it is. Yeah. I know you have a robot list of things you know you're good at. It's, it's, it's only cabbage. Us. It's so good. Oh my gosh, I can make I can make some good cabbage. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> okay then, Christine, how about you? I mean, I feel like it's not it's not a good thing to have, but I feel like I'm super clumsy. So there's not a single coffee table corner of the door that my knee or elbow has not hit. <laughs> It's a hidden talent. That is a it's talent. It's a talent. It's like I just don't have very good spatial awareness, I think. <laughs> mm, okay. I trip on things all the time. She was so a again, big I'm child. I'm not good at that. I'm, it's, I'm good at... <laughs> she was a big baby and ran into a lot of stuff. <laughs> and just... I was a huge child. <laughs> they thought I was going to be like 6'4". She's never worked growing. it out. <laughs> it's amazing that I'm here. Let's move on. <laughs> Frank, look, can we talk about this forecast? Yeah, I'm it's glad you're here, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, look, at Galveston. look, somebody is actually getting in the water right here in Galveston with a wetsuit and a surfboard so okay. well, there's waves. just be careful that, see that's a hidden talent somebody uh, probably here has that we don't know yeah it's foggy out there three mile visibility be careful down on the island you can see the clouds are in place we've had a few showers temperatures right there in the 70s so it's not as warm as yesterday but certainly it is on the warm side exact track radar shows those showers we've had they've really thinned out so sort of just a 10 percent chance you may see something as we move into the next few hours the frontal system that is through Arkansas is now in East Texas. The problem with it is it's going to be a slow mover once it gets here. You can see it's 30 degrees in Oklahoma City. 
44 in Dallas, 31 in Amarillo, 77 in Austin, 85 in San Antonio. So clearly there is cooler air that is poised to move in our direction. I've fade that out so you can see the difference. You see that wind flow there, that north wind and that east wind. That's where the front is at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So the shower chance is still there. The temperatures do go down, especially if you're north of the front and it keeps trying to move on through. It finally gets through here, but not really until Friday. We'll talk about that coming up at 4. So tomorrow, 66. 64 on Thursday and then Friday a high of only 52, but the rain chances are there all three days. It's just a sort of a messy forecast, but we'll get into it. We'll talk about the cook off and the rodeo parade and the Momus parade and all of Mardi Gras that's going on. That's coming up at four o'clock. We yeah, got we parades. Have, yeah, we have Par a lot of parades like crazy. We're going to have a cabbage parade. For <laughs> we should, we should. Yes. And you're going to be delivering. I will, you're I will. make a lot of it. Oh, all right, man. Frank, thank you. And here's a look at some of the other stories we're covering for you and our newscast at four o'clock today. The situation in you Ukraine getting more dire. President Biden laying out sanctions against Russia after its aggressive moves in pro-Russian parts of Ukraine. We'll take a look at those sanctions and how what happens in Europe could impact your money. Plus, it is a story you saw on KPRC 2 News at 10 o'clock last night. A special needs child beaten in a school hallway while three adult aides stood by and watched. Today, we are hearing from that boy's family. Also coming up at 4 o'clock in our Ask Amy report, Amy Davis looks into the folks who bought rodeo tickets for 2020, the year everything shut down because of the coronavirus pandemic, and how you can now use those tickets, plus the safest way to get your passes for this year. Rodeo season is right upon us, you guys. That's oh, a good countdown. thing. Countdown. Yeah, hard to believe, but it is here. All right, friends, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. Okay. All right. Well, inside the black box is a new series tackling issues surrounding race and the role it plays in the entertainment industry. Joe Sam found out how it's spotlighting some of the world's greatest actors of color and their journey to success. Hi Joe. Hey guys, yeah, this is a good one here. Some of those actors include Raven Simone from The Cosby Show and Queen Sugar's Omar Dorsey. This series takes a new spin on celebrity interviews with in-depth conversations that affect the black community. I spoke with its hosts Joe Morton and Tracy Moore as they explore what's inside the black box. In most films, I was like, oh, you know, the black character's eyes. Right. We got it. <laughs> you know, but they were like, no, yeah. no. And they, wrote, they rewrote the script three times. What role does race actually play in the entertainment industry? And how does our complexion reflect that? Well, for the longest time, the mythology, um, which a lot had to do with the criminality of being black, played a great deal in terms of what roles you got. I mean, for the longest time, um, black men were either pimps or drug dealers or uh, boogaboos of some sort. But when it came to women, if you were light-skinned, you got a romantic role. If you were dark-skinned, you got something, something else. Now, all that has changed um, um, a great deal. Uh, we still have some of those problems along the way, but, but that is kind of what's been going on. And being able to be recognized in the industry, we have to have casting directors like you, Tracy, to make sure that we get ourselves on television. What kind of topics are being discussed? What kind of things are we going to learn from these episodes? We discuss everything. And that's what's important because in order for us to learn from each other, we have to share our stories. So I consider, and also the casting world, Joe Morton is an actor. He's not a black actor. So Joe Morton is one of those actors that when we're casting and it's sort of, you know, this character could be anyone, Joe Morton would be considered for that. But then there are other black actors who are black actors and they stay within, you know, that box and then they have to break out of it to broaden themselves. What kind of advice would you give to other actors to be able to do that, to be able to diversify themselves and be versatile within the entertainment industry and these different roles? I had to audition for a piece uh, and the director said, um, and I wanted to audition for the lawyer. He wanted me to do something else. And he said, well, you know, we have to be very careful how we use our, our black people in this film. And I thought, well, isn't that an interesting phrase, how we use our black people in this film? And began to argue the point, at which point he ended up by saying, you know, you're, you're talking to me like a lawyer. I said, well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so <laughs> it's those kinds of things that you need to do in order to, um, to to make it happen. And people often say, well, you know, you can do that because, you know, you have experience, you've been around for a while, but what, what about me when I'm just starting? And I said, I started doing that when I just started, that you have to start at the beginning. You can't wait, otherwise you, you fall into very bad habits or people begin to look at you in very particular ways. And if you try to break out of those ways, they're surprised and are resistant 
to that breakout. So you have to make yourself known as who you are from the very beginning. The common denominator would then be the, the humanity that, that sort of lives within all of us, no matter what our complexion, no matter what our goals are, what, no matter what the obstacles are. That finally being an actor, being a producer, being part of the entertainment industry is the investigation of the human condition. Now, each episode lasts for about an hour and can be found on Crackle. I'll have a link on our website, HoustonLife.tv, with more information on how you can tune in. Joe Morton, anything that he's in is incredible. So watching him on Scandal, this was the perfect time for them to come out with this during Black History. So they are pushing all of these black actors forward and anybody aspiring to be in the industry and find those different roles that fit who they are. Absolutely, and I, I like too that what he said about you know really finding that voice, mm -hmm. right, and understanding that I'm here for all parts, right. any part. What right. I think is uh, really interesting, sorry to jump no, in, no, no. is this format, the discussion format where they can sit in the center of the room and they have the audience there. It sort of reminds me of being back in school when we used to sort of dig into these conversations. Yeah. And clearly there is a, a true, mm -hmm. real need for conversations like mm -hmm. this. Joe. The episodes are incredible. You have to check them out. Great okay. job. We'll do that. No Thanks, problem. Joe. All right, shifting back now to our spring breaker, Lauren Kelly, who's live in Galveston this afternoon with some great ideas for the upcoming spring break. Hey, Lauren. Hey, all I'm missing for spring break are the wristbands, right, Derek? But from birds to fish and tons more, we're here at the rainforest right here at Moody Gardens. Lots of things happening for spring break, which is just around the corner. And those guys are going to tell you all about it when we come back when Houston Life returns in just a few minutes. of experiencing uh, spring break at Moody Gardens is experiencing life. And that's a good way to get you to put your phone down for just a few minutes. Marissa Guest, she's our communication specialist. She's been kind of giving us the ropes, showing us the ropes literally here at Moody Gardens. Spring break is just around the corner. Aside from the fun uh, attractions we all know and love here, but let's talk about some of the newer ones. You guys have a 40 theater that's gonna be playing something really cool. Yes, we're gonna have our new film, Mowgli's Jungle Adventure in 4D theater. Um, that's gonna be really fun. Fun. We also have a couple of other new 3D films like our Sea Lions, Life by a Whisker, and Wings Over Water. So the hotel package you can get here, you literally don't have to leave once you're here because you've got the theater, you've got the golf course, you've got the dining, you can do a sunset dinner cruise on the on the Colonel Paddle Wheel, Paddle Boat. We got to see that last time, it was magnificent, but let's talk about some of the junior camps that you guys have coming up. Yeah, so at our golf course, we have our junior golf camps, and that's going to be happening March 15th through 17th and it's going to be for ages 8 to 13. Okay. So it is a three-day camp, and kids can come out, learn all the fundam fundamentals of the golf swing, and play on our Moody Gardens cor course and get to learn from the pros. So, like, the di let's go back to the dining for just a minute. If yeah. the kids have fun all day, they're doing the junior camps, it's very educational as well. That's when mom and dad can really take the night, the rest of the evening, to kind of make a reservation and have a nice dinner, right? There's some fine dining here. Yes, we have sure. It's on the ninth floor of the hotel. You have beautiful floor to ceiling views of the sunset and the bay. So Sherns is a great option to come out and die and have a special date night. Obviously the best deals are online at moodygardens.org, but can we talk a minute for, about who's making all this noise behind us? Who is coming out and, and yelling around us? I see these beautiful red ones over yeah, here. So we have some of our scarlet ibis and our macaws back here just enjoying life in it's the rainforest. It's the macaws for sure, right? <laughs> Love that. All right, Derek, back to you guys in Studio B. <laughs> wow, you've got quite a chorus out there, Lauren. Have <laughs> fun. <laughs> Very nice. Turning now to our furry family members, here's a question for you. How's your dog's breath? Go ahead, take a nice long whiff. If it's bad, it is time to check your pup's oral health. Dr. Jennifer Hennessy, veterinarian at Animal ER of Northwest Houston, is here with ways to improve your dog's breath and dental health. Dr. Hennessy, it's good to see you. We've you got too. Charlie, Tex's brother, along yes. with Tex, who is very <laughs> relaxed. So the first point that you have, I mean, we all think that bad breath in pets is natural. It's not, right? They shouldn't have horrible yes, breath. Yes, bad breath is not normal. And to spin on that, I have some questions for you. I'm actually going to quiz you oh. to see how much you know 
on okay. dog breath. So number one, okay. <laughs> it's my turn. I know a lot about bad breath. Let's okay. see. What is the percentage of pets that have dental health issues before the age of three? A, more than 35%, B, less than 50%, or C, more than 85%? Oh, man. I would say like around 50%. A little higher. It's actually more than 85% more than... of pets have dental health issues by the, the age three. Wow. And if you think of the toy breeds like Chihuahuas and Yorkies, they actually can have dental health issues as early as one year of age. More common in toy breeds. Yes. Okay, good yes. to know. So number two, how many teeth do dogs have? Uh, 30? A would be 42, B 32, C 22. I'm going to guess 32. That's as many as you have. Okay. So that's a good guess, but they actually have 42. And the irony to me is that a Chihuahua is, has the same number of teeth as a Great Dane. They have 42 teeth. In oh mouth. my gosh. A yeah. lot of little razor sharp teeth. <laughs> okay. So third question. Here we go. How often should you brush your pet's teeth at home if you want to make an actual impact with your with your effort to brush their teeth? Do I have Would choices? it be daily, two times a week, or once a week? I mean, maybe two two times a week. Daily seems like very frequent. Two times a week is correct. It so, is. <laughs> you know, brushing daily, yes, is going to be, of course, you know, daily habits tend to go a little further and give us more results, but at least two times a week in order to have a positive impact in the pet's mouth. Two times a week. All right. So yes. thank you. That was very interesting. Yeah. We have some little dental uh, treats we can give to yes. Tex and Charlie. Yes. Uh, and this is something that a lot of pet owners, oh you know, gosh. may have seen in the store. They can purchase treats that help. Tex, are you going to chew on that thing? <laughs> He's literally frozen like a mannequin. <laughs> Courtney, stop laughing. So these these dental treats are great for dogs, but Dr. Hennessy, you say that they actually need to be going in just as we would to a dentist to get a checkup. Correct. Honestly, when you look into an animal's mouth, and it's like you know when I looked into Texas earlier, we can only see 40% of the tooth. So 60% of a dog's tooth or a cat's tooth lies underneath the gum line. So okay. for a full oral health evaluation, a veterinarian visit is really needed as well as x-rays. And is it a cleaning? that a dog would get at the vet or no just like it's, just to, it's yes. just to take a look the first would be a consult and then x-rays the x-rays can discover actually veterinary dentists have recognized that 28 percent of dogs and 42 percent of cats that go in and have a normal oral exam are discovered to have dental health issues based on dental x-rays so. and that's why it's so critical because at home like you said your dog's mouth and teeth may look totally normal but an x-ray and, and a veterinarian is going to be see able to see things we can't correct because going beyond the teeth we have the teeth attachments, we have the gum health, and a lot of the oral health things that we discover on exam actually can link to general health. So when I do an oral exam at an emergency clinic, I actually look for things as far as generalized health and, of course, tooth issues as well. But we can discover a multitude of things in the mouth that can lead to earlier prevention or care before things get worse. Okay, let's talk about uh, what we can do at home to care for our dog's teeth just to ensure that that next checkup is good. Well, many things like these products here are veterinary recommended, and the key thing is finding a product that is approved by the Veterinary Oral Health Council, okay. and that kind of gives you a leg to stand on whether or not it's good product or just fancy marketing, uh, but those products are going to be labeled, particularly with these, to treat the bacteria in the mouth. The bacteria are the culprits underneath the gum line that actually create plaque, which then leads to tartar. When we're brushing our teeth, like we were talking about before, twice a week, our goal is to clear that plaque and the bacteria so that we never lead to such a heavy buildup of the tartar. And before we let you go, what if your dog, I mean the dog on our screen looks looks pretty okay with this toothbrushing process. What if you have difficulties uh, just getting your dog to relax during this process? Well, key thing is mess with their mouth on a routine basis and make it fun. Make sure it's not stressful and you know fearful and just kind of incorporate that you know as crazy it is into your petting and loving exams. But we do have products nowadays like oral rinses and this one actually goes in the water so dogs and cats can drink it throughout the day and get a cleansing of the mouth to kind of combat bacteria. So it's one way kind of hands off that we can be proactive and take care of our pet's oral health at home. Okay. Well, Dr. Yeah. Jennifer Hennessy, I'm so glad you stopped by today. Thank Looks you. like Charlie has given up on his chew toy. Tex is still lunch. just holding his in his <laughs> mouth. It's okay, buddy. Sweetheart. Listen, if you'd like to connect with Dr. Hennessy, you can visit the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right. Now let's send things over to Courtney, who has a healthier way for us all to snack. Hey, Courtney. Hey, you know, I am going to try this on Oscar, but I'm hearing from 
our producers that uh, Tex thought he was getting a tomahawk steak. So there's some confusion here. The agent is on his on our phone. So we're going to clear this up, though. After the break, Mary Ellen Phipps, she's back in the kitchen breaking down some heart-healthy snacking, her tasty take on how to incorporate more fruits and veggies into our diets. I'm snacking right now. Houston Life will be right back. I love these. February is American Heart Month, and eating healthier is one way to reduce your risk for heart disease. Mary Ellen Phipps, registered dietitian and nutritionist, is serving up some heart-healthy treats and tips to remember when shopping for snacks. It's my biggest pitfall. It's great to see you. It's so good to see you guys. You know, I always start out the day like everything's going to be great, and then I start snacking because sometimes I don't want celery, I want Cheez-Its. I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> it happens, We've right? all been there. And the, the insidious thing about snacking is that all those calories really add up throughout the day if you're not careful. Well, and I think that's the common misnomer about snacking too, is it doesn't have to be this unhealthy thing. There's a whole lot of ways we can kind of up that nutrient density when it comes to our snacks. All right, okay. well, let's get started. We're going to start about fruits and veggies and making it really easy for us to grab as a snack, right? Right. So one of the things we're focused on in February is American Heart Month and how do we make what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis more heart healthy. The first thing is up that produce intake, fruit and veggies, and a dip is the perfect way to do that. So we've got for our fruit, a low sugar peanut butter dip, uh, and it's got a little bit of Greek yogurt in there for some protein content, and then a mayo-free mm. aioli. Mm. Um, so it's technically not a true aioli sauce, but it's made with Greek yogurt. Uh, or you can use kefir as well and just Delicious. kind of help, you know, because nobody likes plain raw veggies, so increase your intake a little bit that, that way. That peanut butter dip is so delicious. Recipe on your website? It is. You can find it there. I think it's great, too, when you get your fruits and veggies at home. My tip is cut it, wash it, and cut it right when you get it because then it's available for snacking. Then you can Yes, you it. definitely want to put stuff at eye level. You want to be careful with some berries. Don't, they'll mold quicker on sure. you than you can eat them. But definitely eye level in the refrigerator or out on the counter. First thing to see, we're more likely to eat it. Absolutely. Okay, I have to be honest. I've been snacking on this next one because <laughs> here's the pistachio shells. This is always a good idea. Yes, yeah, so tip number two is add nuts to your snacking routine. We have years of data to show that people who eat nuts consistently have all these health benefits, uh, decrease Increasing your LDL cholesterol, okay. so that's the bad the cholesterol bad mind, you hear right. about, yes. Uh, improving artery health, decreasing heart-related inflammation, and decreasing the risk for stroke. So all these heart disease markers that we would see. And also you want to pay attention to what you're buying when you're buying the nuts, right? Like how they're prepared. Right, so preferably I'd say get raw nuts or dry roasted. So you'll see here we have some raw pecans and walnuts, but then mm -hmm. some dry roasted almonds. That's why they look a little bit darker, but we're not adding extra oils to it that way. It's just dry roasted. And this is key because Courtney and I were chatting the other day my favorite cashews we get from the, the big store in the big container fried in peanut oil so it needs to be raw or dry roasted nuts right to ideally be yes that's you know any nuts are good but ideally let's go for those low sodium dry roasted or raw and this what is this here so this is if you're if you want mix it up a little bit okay. these are just a simple pecan energy ball again recipe is on my website it's mm. dates pecans a little bit of salt and some vanilla and that's it it's so good it's so good Tastes make like it in a, pie. a food processor Sir? Yes. Mm. That, or if you have one of those high-powered blenders, you can do that as well. Mm. Wow. Delicious. Very, Definitely very need good. the recipe for this. Okay, let's talk about packaged foods because this is where yeah. a lot of people get into trouble. Things to look for and things to avoid. Right, absolutely. So it would be ideal if we could all make homemade everything, but that's mm -hmm. just not realistic for most of us. So whether you're looking for like lower budget items or higher budget items, there's always a heart healthy option that you can choose. And so you want to look for snacks that are higher in fiber and then ones that are lower in sodium and saturated fat. And so I've got like a whole host of options here, everything from popcorn. It's one of my go-to high-fiber snacks. It's so good. Uh, you want to watch out for the oils and the salt. Um, and then we've got crackers. Plantain chips are another good one. Dry cereal is another great snacking option. Kind of mm. satisfies that crunching. Yes. So it's all good. Options. I have to tell you, these plantains are the uh, our house favorite here. But I love an old-fashioned Triscuit. Uh -huh. You can't go it. wrong. Can't go it's wrong. good stuff. Hey, Mary Ellen, before we let you go, these white strawberries over here. I nibbled on one of these earlier. It tastes just like a regular red strawberry. So it's actually not a strawberry. It's called a pine berry. No. They're a new fruit you're going to start to see here in the U.S. a little bit more. They've been grown over in Europe and Japan for centuries, um, but it's called a pine berry. It almost, do you taste like pineapple and pear in there, I feel like? It's sweet and delicious. It's I still can't do it. Similar just... nutrition profile to a strawberry, but it's a completely different fruit. Oh, very, wow. very interesting. Okay, yeah. well, thanks for teaching us something new, Mary yeah. Ellen. It's great to see you. And as always, for more heart-healthy tips and recipes, you can visit our website, Houston. 
HoustonLife.tv. Sounds good. Well, after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show when we'll take you inside a Houston landmark that has a very bright future ahead. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, we continue to celebrate Black History Month with uh, the Imani School and their ongoing efforts to inspire students with African American literature. And speaking of African American trailblazers, the Barbara Jordan Post Office downtown has been reimagined and has quickly become a hotspot to eat, shop, sip, and enjoy the downtown skyline. We'll highlight Post HTX, its rich history, and learn more about its bright future, including Courtney, an organic sky farm. It's being planted right now in Urban Garden. It's also one of the spots where Top Chef filmed an episode. I cannot wait to see those episodes. Before we head out today, we do want to announce this week's winner for our T-shirt Tuesday. The saying this week is... God willing and the creek don't <laughs> rise. So, hey, can you make it to dinner? God, God willing, willing and the, and the creek, creek don't, don't rise. rise. There you go. This was sent in <laughs> by KPRC2 insider Donna Vasek. Donna, keep an eye on your mailbox because we will be sending this shirt your way. Congratulations. And if you want to get your saying on a future shirt, just head to HoustonLife.tv to submit your favorite quote. <laughs> Tex has his eyes on this little treat. He okay, finally buddy. did eat it. You can his have it. His agent figured everything out. <laughs> That's going to do it for us today. It looks like Charlie's taking a nap there. We're going to hand it off to Keith and Christine in studio. All right, Hi guys. So, yeah, nap. That sounds like the right idea. I know, especially <laughs> on a day like today. Ex unless you're going to watch Channel 2 News at 4, so don't go yeah, to sleep stay just awake. yet. Yes. yes. All right, guys. Good to see you as always. You too.